I'm Eric. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Eastern Indiana Works. A little bit later in the program, we'll speak with Valerie Schaefer, president of the Wayne County EDC. We'll also have a conversation with Fred Payne, commissioner of the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. But we start with Tyson Foods, a place that we found very interesting. Let's talk to Bree Steffen, HR manager. Thanks for watching this episode of Eastern Indiana Works. We have the opportunity to be at Tyson Foods and we're talking with Bree Steffen, the HR manager here. Bree, thank you for taking part of your time and, and spending it with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, let's find out a little bit about you, first of all. How long have you been with Tyson Foods? I've been here 11 years. Okay. Um, did you come in as HR manager or did you come in in another position? Um, I actually started here in 2008 as a sanitation worker. Um, after that two years I uh, went into the HR department and for the past three I've been in HR management. Okay, so is your story um, typical that someone's able to come into this facility, start on kind of the ground level and then work themselves into a management position? We have several uh, team members here that have worked themselves into management roles. We have a shift manager that started as an intern and now he's been here almost 15 years and he's the shift manager. <laughs> nice. That's one of the things people like to hear. Is there a chance to move up in a particular business? Um, for those who aren't familiar with, one, that Tyson Foods is here in Portland, and two, what you all do at this particular facility, can you tell us what you do here? Um, so we're a prepared food division of Tyson. Our biggest supplier is Taco Bell. Uh, we make the corn taco shells, the corn tortillas, the, the baked and fried chips for Taco Bell, and we also do the flour tortillas and the flatbread line. Great. Um, talk a little bit about who you hire for. What are the positions, if, if you're hiring, what are the types of positions that you hire for? And, and can you give us an average starting wage? Um, we generally hire for general production and operator type positions. Um, we have different positions, blender operators, bagger operators, forklift operators. Um, we're looking for people that have a little bit of operator experience in their background. We're willing to train you on our equipment um, to learn ours. Our mm -hmm. average starting wage is about $14 an hour. Okay. Um, one of the other things that, that people always have an, an interest in is when you, as an HR manager, are looking at resumes and trying to decide what's good, what's bad, or what has been described as what are your pain points <laughs> as an HR manager, what are you looking at and what are some of your concerns when people come in? Uh, we're looking for people that have had one year of employment with one employer out of the past three years. Um, it's very difficult to find people um, that are willing to show up to work every day. Um, everybody comes to work to do a good job, 90% of your job is just showing up every day to be here. You said before we started that showing up is sometimes one of the problems that you find with employees you're not able to keep. It is very hard to keep employees. Um, it's a common hardship um, within the community to find people that want to come to work every day. Um, we have um, turnover in our attendance is our most reason we lose people. What kind of area are you are you grabbing people from? First of all, how many people do you have employed at this plant? Uh, average about 495 people. What's your what's your max? What's full employment for you? Uh, about 530. Okay, so you're you're pretty close. You're doing yep. you're doing yep. well. What kind of area are your employees coming from? Um, a large percent of our employees right now come from the Fort Wayne area, the Allen County area. Okay. Um, we have a large Seems Burmese like a drive. public. It's a long drive. Um, it's about an hour one way. Um, they commute. And then our next largest is here in actual Jay County in the Portland area. Okay. But you were talking about attendance. Is uh, your attendance problem coming from the people because they're having to travel so far away? Uh, no. Our best attendance is out of our um, people that drive out of Fort Wayne. Okay. That doesn't seem like that would make a lot of sense, but we'll just kind of let that one go for a minute. Um, the shifts that you're running, is this one shift, two shifts, and, and what are your hours like right now? Um, we run three shifts. We're 24-7 operation. Uh, right now we're working six days a week uh, to keep up with customer demand. 
we're here for Eastern Indiana Works and you have worked with them. When did your relationship with Eastern Indiana Works begin and how? Um, about two years ago, um, I was holding a job fair up at the um, local Work One up at our Portland office mm -hmm. and Denny and one of his associates came over and spoke to me and told me about the Eastern Indiana Works program, uh, what they had to offer, what they could do and asked me if it's something that we could use at our plant um, and that's when we developed our relationship and started using them um, to help hire our team members. How has that worked out and, and what program or programs, because they do have a number of them, have you been able to use successfully here at Tyson Foods? Um, their work experience program is the most successful one we've had here and um, we've probably had uh, to date uh, 44 applicants that we've sent over to them. Uh, we've had 11 that have completed the work experience program and we have three currently in the program right now. For those that aren't familiar with the work experience program, tell us a little bit about how you use it and what it is for you. Um, so for us, we use it to help people who don't have work experience gain work experience and see if this company is the right fit for them. If manufacturing, industrial manufacturing is something that they're interested in pursuing a career in or job opportunities. So they have an opportunity to come try us out as an employer and we have an opportunity to see if they're going to be a good fit for us, if they meet our criteria, if they come show up to work every day, and if they're good employee. You've had folks move in and move out. Are, are most of the people that have come in through that program, are they trying to move up? Are they comfortable with where they are? Have you had much in the way of, of issues with the people at Eastern Indiana Works have been able to bring you? Uh, we've had no issues with the people that we have gain through work, um, the work experience program. Mm -hmm. um, generally, they do like to stay in their general production role. We haven't seen a, a lot of them try to go up into a different position. If you're talking to another HR manager, what would you tell them about Eastern Indiana Works, what they're able to bring to Tyson Foods mm -hmm. and how they've been able to help you? Um, I would recommend that they see if it's something that they can use for their company. Um, it has helped us gain employees. It has helped us in the community um, as a whole. We're able to help people who have no work experience. Maybe they've only worked at McDonald's and fast food restaurants. Um, they're able to come here and experience um, getting into a factory and what we have to offer. Bree Steffen, HR manager at Tyson Food. Thank you very much for your time. Best Thank of luck. You. Thank you. Talking with Fred Payne, Commissioner of the um, Department for Workforce Development in the state of Indiana. Thank you very much for taking some time and talking with us. Thank you for having me. We are here for JAG. Now, we heard you in the opening talk a little bit about what JAG was to you. Let's, let's start, go back even more and say, you've been in this position for about a year, correct? Yes. Before that, give us a little bit of your background and how you came to this. Okay. Well, I went to law school down um, at Indiana University Mauer School of Law in, in Bloomington. After that, I started practicing law in Indianapolis and I worked as an employment attorney. Then when Honda Manufacturing of Indiana opened a facility in Greensburg, mm -hmm. I moved uh, to Greensburg, well not physically moved, but I went to Greensburg and I started to help start the legal division over at Honda. And during my time over at Honda, uh, I worked in a variety of roles uh, in ultimately overseeing our business operations. And part of the business operations uh, works directly with workforce development in staffing and understanding planning. And I was asked uh, by the governor's office back in 2017 uh, if I would join uh, the administration uh, to help with workforce development and bring in an industry perspective. 
So I've been in this role uh, since December of, uh, of last year. Is that like when the president calls or when the governor calls, it's hard to say no <laughs> because you, you left, obviously, Honda, uh, a nice company, I assume, to work for, to go into state government. And some people would go, okay, something's wrong with this picture. <laughs> well, well, I don't think anything is wrong with the picture. What uh, it really looks like is when you think that you have something to offer, and someone has the confidence in you uh, to allow you to uh, show your talents and abilities uh, to have an impact on the state, mm -hmm. I think as public servants, uh, we have an obligation to say yes. Okay. Define workforce development for me. Okay. Workforce development is uh, really a, a, a good way of describing our system that helps to train, retrain, and employ individuals throughout our state. All the way from our K through 12 space, even though those individuals are, for, by and large, they are not engaged in the workforce directly, but they will eventually go into our workforce. Right. And we want to ensure uh, in the state of Indiana that we are creating a system that has lifelong learning, that individuals learning and training doesn't stop at just one stage of their lives. So just in short, workforce development really is that we are developing an individual or a career path so that people can take it and they can live their best lives. The way you described it, it sounds like workforce development is a conversation with individuals, with us, with those residents in, in, in Indiana. Is there a conversation that also needs to be happening with the business community that you came from as far as workforce development goes? Oh, it is happening, and to answer your question directly, yes. Uh, good workforce development systems have several characteristics in common. Three in particular. One is engagement. There has to be engagement with employers, with the community, with educators. Two, there has to be the appropriate training. And the appropriate training really means that individuals need to be trained and educated on the jobs that are available today with an outlook for what jobs will be available in the future. And three, there has to be a constant review and reflection of those two to make sure that if there are any course corrections that need to be made, they're made at the appropriate time. As our economy uh, changes so rapidly, we have to make sure that we have a system that's nimble enough uh, to change with the economy. So to directly answer your question on, should that conversation be had with employers and businesses? One, it's being had. And two, it's necessary for us to have a strong uh, workforce development system. And by and large, if we have uh, those three things in place, those characteristics in place, which we do in Indiana, we have what I call good workforce hygiene. And that good workforce hygiene leads to a good, strong workforce development system. You've mentioned a number that in your opening statement to the students that over the next 10 years, I think there'll be 10 million jobs that need to be filled here in the state of Indiana, about a million jobs a year. Where are we in being able to fill those jobs and, and have the workforce needed to fill, again, not the jobs today, but the jobs that may be here five, seven, 10 years from now with what we know is a changing environment, changing technology, changing job market. So one thing is for sure that we need to ensure that we fix what we call a leaky pipe, and that means our pipeline needs to be secure on the early end, meaning our students who are, are, are in middle school and high school and, and they're graduating, uh, we need to ensure that they have the skills and the knowledge and ability necessary to reach whatever their next level is. That next level could mean uh, getting a, a credential. It could mean um, going into the workforce. It could mean uh, going on to school to pursue their various academic efforts. But we want to ensure that we have that in place. So there are a few things that uh, the state, and particularly uh, with Governor Holcomb's administration, that he's put in place to ensure or to help individuals to receive, to achieve their next level. Next Level Jobs has two distinct programs underneath it. One is called the Workforce Ready Grant Program, and the other one is called the Employer Training Grant Program. First, I'll tell you about the Employer Training Grant Program. Under the Employer Training Grant Program, this is a program uh, that was designed to help employers uh, to uh, hire, train, and retrain employees 
really is to help offset some of the cost of that training as we they may have a high turnover rate or the demand increases. So employers could receive under that program up to $5,000 per employee uh, for training and retraining. Per employee? Up to, per employee, up to $50,000 per employer. Okay. Then we have our Workforce Ready Grant Program. This program is designed for individuals who are trying to achieve or seek a high wage, high demand credential. So an individual who uh, wants a high demand, high wage credential, whether it's in machining or something like that, uh, we have training providers throughout the state who can provide those services. And that training is provided free under our Workforce Ready Grant Program. So that's, again, another resource to ensure that we have things in place for individuals to achieve whatever their next level is. Right now, under our program, when it first started, the goal was to have at least 250 employers engaged in the uh, employer training grant program. Mm -hmm. We have over 450 who are training more than 7,000 people in Indiana. Under our Workforce Ready Grant program, we have over 11,000 individuals who are receiving some type of uh, certification uh, through one of our training providers, or Ivy Tech or Vincennes University. So those things um, will help us to be ready for the jobs that we have coming up and will help employers. When you talk to, through Work One or some other avenue where people are, are looking to skill up, change jobs, get more skills. The question always becomes, what's a high wage job anymore? This was a manufacturing state where a lot of things were made. People were used to it. Maybe what was a different wage scale than what we have now. How, how is that defined anymore? How do you all define in workforce development a high wage job? Sure. So we look at two things when we talk about specifically high wage, high demand jobs and when it comes to uh, the programs and how we're trying to target uh, the right jobs. We want to look at demand first. Um, well, not first. We want to look at demand as one of the, the criteria. How much is that job in demand? And then juxtapose that with how high is the wage in that particular job. We want to ensure that individuals have jobs that they can have a sustainable wage and they can take care of their families. Mm -hmm. So there are some jobs that may very well be part-time jobs uh, that may be entry-level jobs that are not considered high-wage, high-demand jobs. You have jobs that are in computer coding. You have jobs that are in manufacturing. Those jobs, you know, in manufacturing can boast anywhere from $16, $17 an hour up into the mid to high $20 an hour and above. Those will be considered uh, high wage jobs and high demand because of the demand we have in Indiana. Okay. Commissioner Fred Payne from the Department of Workforce Development for the state of Indiana. I appreciate you taking some time and talking with me today. Thank you for allowing me to. Welcome back to Eastern Indiana Works. We're having a chance to sit and have a conversation with Valerie Schaefer, who is President and CEO of the Economic Development Corporation of Wayne County. Valerie, thanks for taking some time with us. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Let's start by telling people a little bit about who you are, how you came to um, economic development, and, and on what levels you have worked. Okay. So I am born and raised here in Richmond. and. Um, attended Indiana University East after I graduated from Richmond High School, received my bachelor's in business administration, and landed my first real job with benefits at the Economic Development Corporation as the administrative assistant. So going into this role, 
I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge of economic development. Mm -hmm. I was just excited to be embarking in a new career opportunity um, here in Richmond and just fell in love with the profession. And so I've been working, um, going into my 14th year now in economic development oh. and have spent most of my time here at the EDC of Wayne County, uh, but did uh, work at the Indiana Economic Development Corporation for about a year where I was a regional project manager and was able to go out and work alongside with all of my partners in East Central Indiana. Okay. Yes. Um, obviously, there's a lot that you do in dealing with potential employers. So I'm going to ask you a question. When we say workforce development from your standpoint, what comes to mind? <sighs> Preparedness. Uh, preparing individuals for career opportunities uh, that are meaningful both to them and for our employers. And that is just off the top of my head. Okay. That's not a real definition. That's not, no, <laughs> everybody, but everybody's definition, it seems, mm -hmm. of workforce development is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But preparedness is, is, that, is that piece mm -hmm. that seems to be. How do you look at it? And, and when you talk to those people that are doing workforce development, what is your conversation with them? And how does that impact how you present Wayne County as an example. A lot of people look to the EDC to have a good pulse on what employers need from their workforce. So I get asked a lot about what I'm hearing are the shortfall in particular skills that are needed. Mm -hmm. And so um, we try to work closely with our partners at Work One, Eastern Indiana Works, Ivy Tech Community College, the Excel Center, adult education, to help them understand uh, what we're hearing from the private sector in terms of what they need from their workforce. So that's an ongoing conversation. It changes a lot. You know, major employers in Wayne County include both manufacturing and healthcare, two very different sectors, so their needs are very different. Mm -hmm. um, but even within manufacturing, we have very diverse types of manufacturing, ranging from food processing to uh, metalworking to plastic. So even the needs within manufacturing are, are really different. And so it, it's a difficult conversation to have because there's no, there's no one solution for all employers. It's really about drilling down and looking at what the specific needs are of um, the major employers here in this area and then trying to group them by sector. What's the hardest part about keeping the young people here that you're finding? Because that's what, that seems to be what everybody wants mm -hmm. to do. Either keep them here or bring them back. Sure. What are we lacking in this particular region from, from your standpoint that might help in that initiative? That's a really tough question. You know, young people in general tend to um, quantify their success based on moving away, right? You, you just can't wait to get out of the town you grew up in. And it doesn't matter what town you live in, but you're only going to be successful if you go somewhere else. So trying to bust that perception and create meaningful connections for our students and give them reasons to stay. You know, obviously a job will be at the top of that list, but I think one of the challenges that we face are just local amenities for our youth and, you know, nightlife. Um, more things to do because we're never going to be able to compete with larger metropolitan areas. We'll, we'll just never have the volume that they have, right? Mm -hmm. They have so many more residents that are supporting all of these entertainments and arts uh, and, and various things to do that we're never going to compete. So it's just finding unique ways, I think, to make those connections and and you know, we're only an hour away from a lot of these big amenities. So go away, enjoy the day, and come back and live close to family and friends and enjoy the low cost of living and diverse housing opportunities that we have here. So it's, it's a tough thing to address, but um, one that we're working on all the time. Talk about how the skill sets that come out of the students that are involved in things like BPA and JAG, Jobs for America's Graduates, affect how you're able to talk to potential employers in the, that may be thinking about coming to this community mm -hmm. or retaining jobs um, in this area. 
Sure. Being able to fulfill workforce needs is certainly on the top of every existing or future employer's list. So talking about current programs that are in place that are preparing our students for the future and that are engaging our students in um, our, our current job sector is really important. We want to show both existing and prospective employers that, hey, we understand your needs and we're working towards it. We're developing these new programs. We're developing training programs. You know, we have your needs in mind as we start to um, prepare our youth. And so those types of programs are extremely important. Um, we pr promote them all of the time um, when we talk about workforce. And we're always trying to find unique ways to engage our existing employers in those types of programs because they always need more financial support. And students need to know that upon completion, there are job opportunities for them right here at home. Valerie Schaefer, President and CEO of the Wayne County Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for taking some time with us today on Eastern Indiana Works. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching this episode of Eastern Indiana Works. You can find all the episodes of Eastern Indiana Works on their website, easternindianaworks.org. Our thanks to Commissioner Fred Payne for his time, also to Valerie Schaefer of the Wayne County EDC for spending some time with us, and a special thank you to Bree Steffen and everyone at Tyson Foods who made us feel very welcome. We've talked for a couple of months about doing a program on Eastern Indiana Works and veterans. That's coming up next month. But remember, if you need information for students, employers, or employees, visit the Eastern Indiana Works website at easternindianaworks.org. As always, our thanks to Mike Rowell and his staff for working with us on this program. We hope you find it informative and helpful. We'll see you next month.